This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at the, uh, what is this? Dele de Luca, Esso, the new starting point. And yes, we're gonna do it. 1000 km challenge with Aria again. But this time, this is the 87 kilowatt hour front wheel drive Aria. So, uh, how much faster is it versus the 63 kilowatt hour? We're gonna find out tonight. So, uh, the car has been charged to 100%. Well, actually, huh, um, we are topping up now at the chem power. And uh, I charged from home and then I drove here, and it's still taking 2.3 kilowatt at 100%. So, yes, we might wait a little bit to get it at cl as close as 100% as possible, but I guess it's not that critical because, yeah, I think we can make it to spec it, spec it, spec it anyway. Oh, what the heck? I fired up the car. This car seems to be a bit, little bit trigger happy on uh, <laughs> shutting down everything. But yeah, you see, at 100%, the car estimates 368 kilometers. That's just gum. So this is weird. We start at some weird time. Yeah, 2.30 at night. Uh, I will probably start in around 10 minutes and then I just write down when I start. But uh, yes, uh, the reason why I start so late is that I had to do some baby stuff. It's always ABC, always baby care. So uh, yes, um, I think, uh, yeah, okay, okay. I, have to, I have to show you guys the back. So as always, we bring the EcoFlow and I have the toaster with me and some food. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be good. And now I think this is a fossil car blocking the charger, but no big deal. We have plenty of chargers over here, here, plenty. And it's at night, so no big deal. So let me check now. Is the car charging? It's still charging. Hmm. Okay, let's get ready for it. We are on the move now and uh, you see, we are driving on uh, wet roads, but you can barely hear the water. Or, you know, some cars, for example, Tesla, with poor soundproofing, you can hear that high frequency, like that constant hissing sound, like from, from the water splashing from, above, from below. But in the audio, it's dead silent here. <laughs> Each one go home. Wow. Okay, but it's a small disadvantage though that we have wet roads. It's going to be roughly 50, uh, 40% of the route now will be some wet roads. So um, yeah, that's not much I can do about it because uh, already in day after tomorrow, I mean, yeah, on Monday in two days roughly, or one and a half rather, then I have to return this car. So um, yeah. We are now at Speculator, we came here with 12%. So, um, whoa, interesting. I received 115 kilowatt initially. What? It's doing that 90 kilowatt wave again, just like the small battery. Huh? It's doing this at night, I suspect. Um, I mean, with a small battery, it was fine, but this one, you kind of need to charge faster than 90 kilowatt, buddy. What the heck is wrong with Aria, really? I haven't found out about this. It's a big mystery. But okay, let me show you. Um, I have to go to the restroom, but I have now activated the toaster. Oh, so it's getting ready. We are pulling 900 watts. Yeah, we're heating up the toaster now. So, okay, let's go to the restroom. Oh yeah, let me see. Is it ready yet? Uh, a little bit more, okay, a little bit more. Okay, so seems like we need around 200 watt hours only to make toast. <laughs> yeah, the EcoFlow is down to 81% uh, right now. So still good for more toast, but okay, whatever. So yeah, now we just have to let it cool down. It's getting nice and toasty in the back seat here. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Is it? Oh, it's a bit hot. Mm, nom, 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 nom. 
All right, we have enough juice to go to um, uh, wild bike now. So 17 minute charging stop, uh, 90 kilowatt uh, almost all the way there. Oh, that's not good. We are getting close to Weyerbike. So you know the whole uh, 90 kilowatt wave? I have a theory that it is based on time. Uh, just like the BMW, uh, night, at night time it's gonna charge slower uh, to not uh, make too much noise. And since this is a Jap Japanese car, I suspect that they might have a similar, similar feature, but it's hard-coded. There is no feature or setting for it. But I have a theory, so I'm gonna try this. So you see, I set now clock to manual, and uh, it's supposed to be 5.55 at night. I set it to 5.55 in the afternoon instead. So we will see once we get over to Weilbike, <laughs> if we will still get the 90 kilowatt wave, or if we trick the car into believing it's, it's afternoon, evening now, so it's, it's fine to uh, charge at normal curve. Yeah, let's see then. All right, we're here, let's see. So as always, every time we plug in, it will get that initial 115 kilowatt. But then usually, just for a couple of percent, and then it will slow down. What, what, what is that sound? As soon as I'm going to click, 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 click. Well, let's see now. How long does this last? Ah, shit. After three minutes, it throttled to 90 kilowatt again. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, yeah, you know, there could be an internal clock in the car. So even though you set the displayed clock to be whatever, then maybe the internal clock is counting. So we have another theory we have to test, which is that eventually the, the actual time will pass nine in the morning. Uh, so then we will see if we get back to the normal curve or not but okay anyway i think it's time for some circle k all right next stop is going to be helsingborg that's a turnaround point and uh, i can show you here that the infotainment in the area is um well i don't know man like all the icons and everything you know it looks kind of cartoon-ish or maybe designed from the 80s <laughs> um but okay, but at least it works and it has matte screen here and matte screen here. So um, now we're going to find uh, Helsingborg. I know it's not the Harmstad. Okay, here's Helsingborg. So if I zoom in a bit. Okay, zoom in some more. Eventually, there, there. Now I start seeing the chargers. Attikulla. You see Helsingborg has a Saifa. So okay. Huh? What? What? Wait, wait, wait. Was it? Was it Ionity? Ion? Wait. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be that one. Okay, go there. Wait, Eon? Uh, okay, whatever. I think it's roughly there. Yeah, it's supposed to be that one. Okay. So, you see, we are 36%. We are st still taking 90 kilowatt. I calculated that I need to charge it 75%. Uh, the smaller battery area needed to charge it 85%. So actually maybe 75 is a bit overdue, I'm not sure, but just in case, since we have some wet roads today. All right, look here, look here. I was just looking through the infotainment and I saw this HVAC settings here, right? If you click here, look, fan only mode. This car has only fan mode. <laughs> well, of course, it's a Japanese car. You know, Japan invented only fans, they invented Anime, they have hentai. Wow, it's getting bright outside. Okay, I will just document that um, this charging session was 37 minutes long. It should have been maybe less than 30 minutes. Okay, let's go.
We are now a little bit past the halfway point at Helsingborg and finally it's bright outside. So uh, it's almost, what was the time now? So it's almost eight in the morning. So this is the big mystery again. When I plugged in, I had 150, <laughs> I was about to say, I had 115 kilowatt. Uh, I, yeah, and now we are down to 90 kilowatts. So, um, all right, uh, nothing else to report. So, what, what should I say? The car, well, huh? how did it stay dry now? Okay, so let me see. Um, getting kind of bored now. We will go back to Helsingborg, and we will go back to Wildbike. Um, I can show you, maybe, can I show it here? Yeah, yeah, you see here. So the total consumption so far is 288 watt hour per kilometer. It's a little bit higher than the, the one uh, with the smaller battery. But keep in mind that it was wet all the way. And you can see here, it's also wet here. So with the other runs, it was wet only around 40%. Here, we have to count it as wet like 100% of the time so far. Yeah, but the good thing now is that uh, since it's uh, eight in the morning, then circle K is open for entry. And I'm going to show you guys, since so many, so many people ask me about this. Okay, so if you go here, you go here to settings, and then you go down to EV settings. Uh, here, you will see that battery cooling assist is on. And also, here, if you go here, and then you go to EV, which is kind of weird. And then you see here the battery heater is on. By the way, uh, this is, I don't like this, because some settings are here, right? And then some settings are here. So actually, this car also has easy entry. When you when you enter the car, the seat will slide backward. This one will go up. So naturally, I was looking for that setting here in the seat. I was like, huh, what the heck is this? Driver's seat pop-up. No, that, that's not, that's something else, right? Driver's seat pop-up. Pop uh, it's a pop-up when you do something with driver's seat. But I was like, huh, where's the easy entry? And then I was like, okay, let's look here at least. M must be here, right? So then I was like, hmm, let me see, clock, vehicle settings, EV settings, may, uh, yeah, lots of other settings. But there's nothing to do with the seats here. Well, guess what? You have to go to vehicle setting, and then you find driving position, and here you have a driver's seat, or this is, this is um, uh, easy entry. <laughs> We are now at Weyerberg, sun is up, it's 9.30 now, so uh, we are just charging here at Ionity. So um, let me see, I have a theory that now after 9, then it's considered daytime and then we will get 115 kilowatt all the way until 45%. We have to wait though, it it's always starts like this. So I guess I'll go to the restroom and then I'll come back. And also look here, we have an ID4 charging here at the end. And see the ID4 is parked outside the lines because the charge port is on the right side, which is the wrong side. Should have been the left side, which is the right side. Just you see, if, if the ID4 was parked with the charge port on the left side, it could be parked like this. And you see my car is parked within the lines. Huh? Well, actually this one also has the charge port on the right side, which is the wrong side. Should have been left side, which is the right side. What the heck? I went to the restroom. You see, we've been charging for eight minutes. It just dropped now. It was hovering at 115 kilowatt uh, for the longest time until now. Uh, okay, I guess I'm going to speculate. I think I need around 40%. We're gonna go to speculate and charge there. I was thinking about skipping it, but uh, actually we should ride on the 115 kilowatt wave. <laughs> okay, I thought I figured it out. Well, we will see at speculate, but I have a theory. Let's see now. Uh, we have to gather more evidence. I've been testing this car, uh, but also testing the other area. Uh, and that was, it was tested at different times of the night. 
So uh, I, I will just gather enough evidence before I try to make some conclusion now. And then ProPilot is working great for the most times. Sometimes ProPilot will just totally disengage without, uh, well, yeah, without warning, without any reason really. But for the most time it's okay. So then I can eat this. You see, I have carrots and grapes. Mmm. Mm. I found out that carrots and grapes, they, are, they fit well together. Very nice combo. And I'm kind of fed up with eating that, all that junk food, like, like that, the double sausage penetration. So remember to A, B, C, always bring carrot. And I have this nice stolen bag container for food uh, or something like this. Man, we are now at speculate, 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 speculate. So um, I came here almost half an hour ago and there was only one charger available, which is this one. And I used it, I tried to use it. And yeah, this one means the charger is not working. Um, first of all, I noticed that the RFID reader on this tritium charger is not, well, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, it's a tritium charger. So the, the RFID didn't work, so then I had to scan the QR code and it was kind of clumsy, but I quickly do it, I you know, started manually. It started charging. And then after a minute or two, it stopped, I was like, huh? And then I tried again. And then I had to retry several times. And meanwhile, some of the other stalls were actually available. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should move over to those stalls because they work, right? But then other people were queuing up because it's kind of busy. So I kept trying this one. And then it started to work. I was like, okay, good. Then I went to the gas station, went for some food, restroom, came back, it stopped again. I was like, unbelievable. So I called the hotline and I reported that the RFID reader is kaput. He's like, okay, we have reported it uh, from before. Um, and then um, he didn't try to help start the charger because some other companies, they might try to start it because they see that I tried to charge it, but it didn't work. So they told me to scan the QR codes. I was like, okay, did the same thing. It started charging for a minute, it stopped again. I was like, unbelievable. But then suddenly this charger became available. So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this one. And then it works, of course. Uh, I will show you that uh, we have more tritium chargers that are broken. This one here is also kaput. You see that the light is not on and uh, the screen is dead. So kaput chargers, co-financed by the Connecting Europe. Yeah, co-financed by uh, EU. <laughs> <laughs> we keep finding kaput chargers, guys. But okay, anyway, so we're gonna check here. Uh, are we getting 115 kilowatt? Okay, after four minutes, we are still getting 115 kilowatt. So we're gonna see one more at uh, Strömstad. Yeah, but uh, so um, I have to deduct 26 minutes because of these charger problems. That is a new record, man. 26 minutes of charger problems. <laughs> Tritium for the win! <laughs> oh, look here. After nine minutes of charging, it dropped to 90 kilowatt again. <laughs> okay, I've done a charging test in Norway. We're supposed to get 115 kilowatt until around 40, 50, almost 50%. And then it's supposed to gently throttle to around 105 kilowatt. So it's supposed to be ni nice and flat, not this kind of sudden drop to 90 kilowatt. So, yep, I think I have to align up. Like here, here, so we get the audio, like this, maybe. And then, uh, is that a good thumbnail? Uh, like this? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh-oh, uh-oh, we are getting close to Strömstad. We have 4% no indicated range left. <gasps> Shit, and we're still three kilometers away from the charger. Uh-oh, uh-oh, please don't die on me. Don't die on me now. Okay, guys, look, look, look. This car is obviously hiding something. There's, there must be some significant amount below 0% because even at 4%, you have 80% power. <laughs> How many kilowatt hour are you hiding there, man? This is it. The final charging stop usually happens at Strömstad. Fortunately, no Ladestau here. That's good. And working charger. I had to go to the restroom and I haven't paid attention to the charging session initially, but look here. Now suddenly, okay, we are right at 4%. Now we've been charging for 12 minutes and we are still receiving 115 kilowatt. This is close to what I, actually this is spot on what I got in Norway for now. So now at the last charging session, we are finally getting the speed we're supposed to get with this audio. <laughs> I have no idea why it was charging slower in the other sessions <laughs> okay so let me guys uh, let me tell, tell you guys um, what uh, my plan is so i calculated i need 60 percent to reach home maybe maybe 55 is enough i'm not sure uh yeah well we're gonna go for six i will also deduct a couple of minutes for the convenient charge i can go straight home uh normally five minutes i'm not sure this time and um, yeah we are now 137 kilometers away, but look at the time. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't calculated how we are going now, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah, I need to calculate. Shit, I need to calculate. I need to know how we are going doing. This is it, the countdown. 9991, 9992, 9993, 9994, 995 996 999 999 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 10 hours and 50 minutes 15 minutes faster than the small area <laughs> oh shit right we're back home now so how was it today then um so 10 hours and 50 minutes is not that fast uh well okay compared to the small area it was 15 minutes faster but only 15 minutes i expected it to be at least half an hour faster so why wasn't it that fast? Well, mainly because we were charging mostly at 90 kilowatt for at least three charging sessions and also the other charging sessions. Uh, we got 115 initially and then it dropped to 90 kilowatt rather than 110 kilowatt, slowly 105 kilowatt and then 100 kilowatt, you know. So, <laughs> so basically we were charging a very similar speed as the small area for most of the time. And that's why, yeah. <laughs> Does it make any sense? The battery here is 38%, well, I think it was, I think it was 38% bigger than a small battery. So uh, this car should have charged way faster, but it didn't. And then the consumption though was very similar to the small one. Okay, slightly bigger, uh, maybe because it was a little bit wetter today. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, but also compared to the competition, but they're more expensive though. Like uh, the MB cars, they they are roughly at one uh, 10 hours and 20 minutes, like half an hour faster. So I feel like if Nissan could nail down the charging sessions uh, to get them faster, and if we can actually get 130 kilowatt fairly flat-ish, then we can actually see, you know, 10 hours and uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes, not 10, 50 like now. So... I guess maybe I will do an, uh, an, a rerun if uh, Nissan fixes this, but until now it's just gonna be like this. So I guess if you ordered a rear wheel, I mean, if you ordered a front wheel drive audio, 
with a big battery and you're not sure whether you should go for it or not, maybe you can just go for the smaller battery. It's almost 50,000 nook cheaper. And the smaller battery is slightly more efficient. It actually feels a bit more nimble, it's lighter. Uh, and yeah, and no big deal. You will lose roughly 100 kilometers of range versus the big battery. But okay, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.